Hello and welcome to Up and Villa podcast. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and thanks for all the viewers that watch our videos. Um, so on this episode, a bit of everything really. We're going to have a preview to Newcastle, chat about the Wolves game, have a little look at the Premier League table as well. Um, we've got some right divas on our hands at the minute. Ryan's kept us waiting. He's been in bed. Seb's looks like he's been dragged through a bush. He's had to be <laughs> Me and Justin, we've just been chilling. We were... Raring to go, so bang on time tonight. Bang on time, we were. I don't know whether just because we've got 2k subscribers now, we've got some white little divas on our hands. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, let's just have a little chat about you know how we felt the game was in the end. You know, looking back now, I feel like points, for, it's all right, results. Um, you know, we've been sort of going through the past, like, winning one, losing one, so I guess. To get a draw when it probably looked like the second half, we were probably going to lose that game the way it was going. It was probably decent in the end. Um, Justin, what are your thoughts on it? How did you feel like we played? Yeah, I think we've sort of, sort of everyone's sort of talked about it now. We, we were decent first half, poor second half. We've played worse this season. We've played a lot better this season. So I think overall we was happy to get a point and come away with it, uh, especially against Wolves local derby. You don't want to lose them games, do you? Um, things to improve on. Uh, a lot to work on still. Yeah, I think we've talked about this. The midfield, I think I saw a stat yesterday that he's played some like 12 or 13 different midfield partnerships in the last six or seven games. He's, you know, That's the, the thing we've got to settle down. We've got to get that right. That three in the middle has got to be sorted. That's what was our bedrock of our success at the start of the season. Same team, week in, week out. Everybody was in form. Everybody was playing well. Everybody knew basically who was going to play every week. And that's what you build off. We've had a real difficult run of players missing, players out of form, and, and the results are sort of showing that, aren't they? So the sooner we can get everyone fit back in, playing well, the sooner our results will improve, I've no doubt about it. Yeah, so it sets us up now for Newcastle. Um, I don't know if any of you guys like this, but obviously the way the fixtures are at the minute, there's a game on after one, one after another, isn't there? So I feel like... I tend to keep watching the same team. I don't know how it just falls, but I, I, for some reason, I always watch West Brom. I always watch Newcastle. I'm always watching United and I always watch Man City. That, I don't know why that happens, but they're, they're the teams that I'm watching. So I have watched a bit of a bit of Newcastle. Um, and honestly, for me, I think they're probably one of the worst teams in the league, the, the way that they're, they're playing football. I just think... They're not great at all. So for me, I feel like if we have the right application and we turn up, I feel like even without Jack, we should be getting three points on Friday night. Um, Seb, how are you feeling about coming up against Newcastle? Yeah, they're struggling, aren't they? They're really struggling down there. And they've been dragged into a relegation battle that they probably were expected to be out of come the start of the season. They're not playing good football. Their confidence looks shot and they're without their best player, Callum Wilson. I think it's always going to be difficult. We've experienced it with Jack Grealish ourselves. So they're going through the same tough patch. I think if we can gain some momentum and start playing, we can cause some trouble. I have every confidence that we can come away with the three points. I mean, it's not just Wilson that's out. Almiron's out. St. Maxim's out. They've got a lot of players out. And I remember after... The last time we played them this season, there were seven points from the relegation zone and the fans were, were were on about being dragged into it then. And now they're sitting a point above the relegation zone. So they have been well and truly dragged into it now as well. Um, Ryan, what are your feelings going into the Newcastle game? Yeah, they're the start of confidence, aren't they? And they couldn't rise themselves for the for the dinosaur derby. You know, it was vintage Jurassic Park, wasn't it? Watching uh, Big Sam and uh, Steve Bruce go head to head, but but now they look they look a doom side to be honest. Um, there's a lot of bad press coming out of the training ground, and it, it just looks like a, a car crash waiting to happen with Newcastle, really. So I am expecting us to go up there and and grab the three points and, and learn from our Sheffield United performance. Uh, Hannah, that does a lot of writing for the for the uh, website, I seen one of her tweets where she called us uh, Crossbar FC, and I'm just thinking sooner or later we're going to stop it in the crossbar, and these goals are going to flow in. And um, 
I don't know, for some reason, I'm expecting us to go out there and, and get a big win, to be honest. So, yeah, so looking forward to the game for Arden. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad it's not on a Wednesday. I mean, that's surely going to help us. Um, and hopefully we're not in the third kit. I don't think we will be because we've not we have not done any good in that either. Um, so, yeah, just what, what are we thinking lineup wise from us then? Who do we feel like is going to be in that midfield, Justin? <sighs> Christ, it, it, you can almost um, just put all the names into a hat and, and, you know, pick out three, couldn't you, the way it's going at the moment? Um, if I'm honest, I think the, the one that's most looking to be played at the moment is John McGinn. And that's not having a go at John McGinn. We all absolutely adore John McGinn and it, he's been f- just sensational for us. But he, he's the only one that seems to be undroppable in that midfield. And I, I can sort of see why, because of his, you know, the way he plays and his, his energy is always there. So, so it's difficult to sort of replace that if he's not playing. But I don't know. I really... <laughs> If I was the manager, uh, I would probably stick with D- uh, Douglas Louise in the holding role because I think he brings more to the to the game, not going forward. Having said what I've said about McGinn, I think he probably has got to start again, and I probably would stick with Sanson if I'm honest. I think I don't think he, did, providing his ankles okay, I think he did okay. He was, you know, shame for him to uh, to, to have to come off with an injury when it, you know he's made his first start, and probably I would change it up with playing Barkley. Uh, Watkins and probably Traore in the front three instead of playing Barkley in the midfield. I, I would push him that little bit further forward to try and get him more involved in in sort of the the business end of the pitch, if you like. The problem we've got is Newcastle. We all know what Steve Bruce does. He'll just sit ten men behind the ball, won't he? You know he, that's the way he plays. Don't lose the game. Don't really try and win it. So we will have our work cut out trying to break them down. The key would be getting an early goal, and then hopefully we can really show a bit. of confidence and, and it could turn our season around so a tough game but we've got enough in the locker room without Jack to beat them because they're poor at the moment yeah I mean I'm, I'm a bit torn on Louise or Nakamba for this game because I just feel like I like Nakamba defensively so I feel like if we're going to get counted which is probably what would happen against Newcastle we're a bit more solid but then on the other hand I feel like Louise is better with the ball he, I feel like he he pushes us forward a bit better. So, what are you thinking then, Seb? I I disagree. I think it has to be Douglas for me. I, I, we played in a camber against Sheffield and it just didn't seem to click. The fact that we were looking for a goal and we had so much of the ball, that doesn't suit his style of play. I would have thought, if anything, the preference would be to get on the ball you know, force them back, you get a few goals and then we could bring the camber on to stop the threat of the counter-attack with the lead. Um, however, as Justin's alluded to, that midfield has been chopped and changed. So at the moment, you could toss a coin for who could be in there, but he's right, we've got to get an early goal. It's going to be interesting to see who he does put in there then. Um, who would you go with, Ryan? Centrally? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult one at the minute because out of that three, if one of them's not at it, the, it, the whole system seems to fall apart and, and that starves the, the forward three of any service as well. So it does seem like a, a fine balancing act at the minute. Um, maybe you could even probably go Nakamba and Louise sitting deep and then have McGinn push further forward or, or a Barkley. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see, see what he goes with, to be honest. Yeah, it is, it's going to be really interesting. So an image that I'm going to put on the screen now is the projected Premier League table from Sky Sports. Now, it is pretty pretty interesting, to be fair. Um, as it stands at the minute, we've got two games in hand over Liverpool. Uh, we could go above them as it stands as well. But they've got us based on current goals scored, goals conceded and points per game. We're going to finish in eighth place on 58 points. They've got West Ham in sixth place to finish on 66 points. Um, they've also got us to finish ahead of Liverpool as well, which we, we're ahead of Liverpool on goal difference as that stands as well. So, um, you know, I've, I've showed some of the tables. What, what do you make of it, Justin? Because you did a bit of a piece for us a couple of episodes ago about our European challenge. Yeah, you know, I said that I think I said at the time that we would need to probably win our next three, and obviously we've drawn one and lost one. So it does, 
with a lot of tough games coming up in the running. Just looking at this table, it, it's going to be tough, isn't it? It's ultimately it's down to our form, isn't it? We're carrying the play where we're playing. We're not going to get top six, top seven, might, might even not get top eight or nine because we've got to pick points up. You know, we're playing a lot of teams around us, Tottenham twice, Everton twice, which are massive games in the context of where we're going to finish. Uh, you know, we got 40 points after... 26 games was it so th- that ratio we could hit 60 points which we haven't we only done I think five or six times I looked into this uh, the other day we haven't hit 60 points that many times in, in the whole hi- history of the Premier League so to get anywhere near 60 points for me is a massive achievement this season and it's definitely achievable it is you know I'll say again we've got to beat Newcastle because without any kind of form you're not going to do anything we've got a, an international break coming up and we play Tottenham the week after. So if we can beat Newcastle, get Jack back for Tottenham. It looks like he's not going to be there for, for the game against Newcastle, which I don't think is a huge blow. Obviously, he adds everything to us, doesn't he? But I think we've got enough to beat Newcastle. I think he would be critical to, to, to play him against Tottenham. If we could pick up two wins before the break, get everybody fit and firing and have a real good go after the international break, then I think anything's possible still. Tough, but definitely possible. Brilliant. So looking further down the table, Seb, it's got uh, your mate Parker to be relegated. It's not going to happen, is it, surely? Look, I mean, projected tables is not something that I look too deeply into. I think the reason everyone is so invested in football is because of the potential of the unknown. You know, 11 men step out on that pitch for each team perfectly capable of beating the opposition, whoever that may be. And that's what intrigues us all. Every game is different, especially in the Premier League. So to predict the table is very, very difficult. I mean, they predicted us to go down last season. And although we probably thought they they were right at the time, they didn't get that one correct. You just can't tell when a team's going to come into form or how injuries may impact a team and they might fall away. So... I don't look too deeply into it. But if we did finish where we're predicted, eighth, then I'm sure many fans at the start of the season would have taken that. Yeah, so we've got to go to some questions now, um, some thoughts of the viewers and listeners that have added, have, have put into us. So Aaron Fields put his jack back for Newcastle. Well, I think we're all we're looking at training pictures now every single week. And unfortunately, he's not being spotted in one. So for me, it feels like at this moment in time, he's not been on the training pitch, um, which, you know, is a bit of a blow. I guess there's still a couple of days. So he could maybe be on the training pitch today, today or tomorrow. I don't know. So we have to see on that one. Dave Mooney's put, with Newcastle only winning two games in 16 matches and we've had Alma and Wilson and St. Maxim, we need to take it to them. Um, I, I agree with him. I think we do need to take it to them, but I think Sheffield United had only won three games all season and they they did us over, didn't they? So I think, we, again, we, we can't really read too much into that one. Um, Gary Plaza has put, be interested to see all your views on the calibre of player targeted in the summer and realistic targets. Zaha, Ali, Tammy, a left back and a centre back. Um, Ryan, I'll go around all of you. So, you know, each name, a few that you feel like we'd, you'd want or you'd like us to get or who we should be sort of trying to attract to, to fill our positions that you feel like we need. So, Ryan, who's the names you sort of would be looking to bring in? I think sort of um, these performances we've been getting lately has highlighted where we do need to strengthen. Um, you know, we could have gone on and won and won and not seen the cracks in our system, but at least these results now are proving that we know where to strengthen. And I think it's the midfield, isn't it? I think we need, we certainly need to get Watkins some support. I think the back five have been solid, super solid. But if one of them was to get injured, we're struggling there, aren't we, as well? So it, it's getting a higher calibre of attacking player, I think, and maybe a, a central midfielder and then building a, a backup and young players as well. I quite like the model that Dortmund do, really, where they attract all the young talent and all the young talent want to go there and play. So, you know, if, if we can go down that sort of line as well, that would be, be really good. 
I mean, if we could bring in Haaland, then I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kid. He's just so, scored as well. So, has he? Yeah. Justin, uh, uh, what, you know, names are you looking at then? Uh, again, I think we've all been looking at this a lot. Right. My wish list is a backup left back. I'd go for um, the lad at Brentford. I forgot his original name. Henry, no, Rico. Smith had. Henry. Rico, Henry, yeah. I'd go for Sanderberg when Sheffield United get relegated because I think he's a six foot five dominant centre midfielder, something we haven't got in, in the ranks. We've got a lot of midfielders, but nothing like that. A lot of ability, only young as well, 23. I like Elise, I think, at uh, Reading, is he? Reading? The winger. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think he'd be a good buy. I don't think he'd be mega, mega money. Uh, forward. So the two for me at the moment, realistic forwards, I think, are Tammy, obviously, and I think Eduard again at Celtic. Looks like he could be leaving. He's only got one year left in his contract. So they would be my few I would go for. And the big buy has to be, for me, a number 10. A, a, a best to world-class number 10 as we can possibly attract and afford. I would, that would be where all my big money would go in the summer. We have to get a world-class 10. Buzzing. I mean, one name that I put about, um, you know, in January was Lingard, and everyone was laughing at me for putting Lingard. But, yeah, he's been really good for West Ham. So I felt Brilliant. like he would have been on loan. We should, I feel like we should have been all over that, um, you know, and then tried to get him in. So, Seb... We've got a few names that we want you to discuss as well. So go over them and then, you know, what sort of player are you? Do, do you feel like we need to be bringing in? Uh, yeah, I mean, Justin's hit the nail on the head, really, and he's covered every position really well. I think if we can use a balance of the lower leagues in the English market, I think we, we showed how effective that can be this summer with really shrewd signings like Matty Cash just springing into mind. And if we could also balance that with some of the foreign markets, I think that would really help because we all know that English players are incredibly overpriced uh, compared to what you can get quality-wise in other markets. Um, but yeah, positions-wise, Justin hit the nail on the head. Brilliant. So uh, let's go to another one. So we've got, would love to hear your opinions on what has changed since halftime at Burnley that has led to us creating so few chances. That was from the Brooks on Twitter. Um, Ryan, what, what, you know, do you feel like since Burnley we have sort of dipped off dramatically? Um, I don't know, because that first half we were absolutely terrific, weren't we? We've we just... I don't know. It just it just feels like that midfield three. We, we're just not finding the right balance there. And uh, the sooner we find that balance and we get going again, I'm, I'm sure the goals will start flowing again. We were very good against Wolves first half. Very good. And it felt like the Villa we'd become accustomed to. Um, second half, yeah, obviously not so great. But we, we, there's still time to, to, to um, regain our form. I mean, we've still got loads of games left. You know what I mean? There's still a good few games and just need that one. For me, we just need that one win to kickstart it. Like Justin said, international break, Jack will be back and then we go 100 mile an hour into the last remaining games and, and push on as much as we can. Um, a point I made on the last um, podcast episode was our set pieces, free kicks in and around the box. Uh, we've really struggled with. Uh, Noel has put on Twitter, set pieces, why are we not optimising chances from them? Sanson to start, you may have talked about this earlier. So let's just talk about corners especially. We're woeful at them. I think there are times, at times when we've done a little routine at times when Jack's been in the squad and a one-off little route and it looks quite good. It, it sort of nearly created a chance. We looked quite like we got a plan, but nine times out of 10, it's first man job and, you know, we've got no one attacking them. So what are all your thoughts on these set pieces then, Seb? Yeah. Uh, well, well, um, I mean, it's not for the want of trying. I mean, we're constantly getting free kicks and corners in dangerous areas, but it's so often that we see them hit the first man 
or peter out for a goal kick if we can balance that with the high scenario presence that we've got in the squad it can be really dangerous it's just about working those little routines those clever free kicks the way to catch opposition out that get you you know it could even get you three more points yeah i, f- I felt like wolves wolves were pretty good against us with their free kicks in the second half and corners they looked like every time they had a corner they were creating chances at one point. What what do you put it down to, Justin? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's so bizarre when you think we've got the most fouled player in the Premier League that plays for us. So, it invariably, he's in the final third. So, every single foul we get is in a fantastic position. You would think that the coaching staff would be all over that, wouldn't you? You'd be like, we get so many free kicks in so many good positions. So we need to be better at this. So if either work at it all the time, whoever is your set piece takers, just drill them, drill them, drill them, drill them. Or if it, if it, if it is as bad as it has been, go short, you know, retain the ball. If, if, if all you're going to do is hit the front man and get it cleared every single time, take a short corner, take a quick free kick, like Seb says, change it up. You know, retain the ball in the final third. That's that's with the players we have. Surely it's better to to, to try and probe in the final third than just fling a ball into the box. It's inevitably going to get cleared. You know, change it up. Short corners. You know, a man running off. You know, we, you see them all the time. You know, we've got the players to, to do these things. So to see repeatedly the, the, the Premier League. If I on a Sunday part when I used to play. It was a, my, as a centre forward. It was the most galling thing in the world that you think is brilliant. <laughs> Somebody has got nobody on him within ten yards of him. The ball is static. All he's got to do is deliver it. These are Premier League football. It is the yeah. bane of my life watching us not being able to hit a decent corner or a free kick into the box. How long ago was that, Justin? <laughs> Fifty-seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, no, in all seriousness. That ball should be causing chaos in that box. It should not be in that first man at all. What, what are you putting down to, Ryan? Yeah, it's poor. It's re- it really is poor, man. It, there's nothing worse in football than not beating the first man. The corners, we seem to be going down that Southgate train sort of set up where, and that's not working either. So, like Justin says, we need to improve on it because look at Martin O'Neill. You know, when we we was last successful hitting that sixty point barrier that you was you was talking about there, O'Neill would get us, I don't know, ten, fifteen goals from set plays. And we've got the players to do it. Conza, he's dangerous in the air. Mings, Troy Allais, blooming tall lad. So the, the players are there to to cause danger. So um yeah, we, we it does need working on in the training ground. Definitely does. So Obviously, thanks everyone who's put their, their comments and thoughts in. Um, it's a nice little feature um, that we've started to do as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like we've got to beat Newcastle. You know, we've, we've got to get three points against Newcastle. I'll be fuming if we don't get these three points against them. Um, so let's go around and have some score predictions. We'll start off with Ryan. Back it as well. I, yes, back in as well. You know what? I'm going to go for 3-0. I just think the goals are going to fly in. No more of this crossbar FC. The, the goals are going in. I'm, I'm going to go along them lines, but I'm going to go... I'll go 2-0. I'll go 2-0. Uh, Justin? I'm going 4-0. <laughs> I think we're going to get an early goal. I think it's going to be... They're going to not know what's hitting because it's going to throw their game plan out the window. They're going to have to try and attack. It will play into our hands and we're going to blitz them. Yeah, I'll get that goal and, and like you yeah. say. First 20 minutes, get an early goal and then just hopefully confidence will grow from that and we can get two or three more. Definitely. Seb? I mean, first of all, I was thinking 3-0, but Ryan stole that. Then I thought, you know what, maybe 2-0, but you took that. And then, you know what, maybe optimistic 4-0, but Justin got in there first. So I'll round it off just for my OCD and say we'll snatch a 1-0. You said 5. I know, you could have gone 4. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like you. <laughs> well, um, thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll be back after... Uh, the game against Newcastle for a bit of a match reaction as well. So thanks for listening. Up the Villa.
Up the Villa. Up the back Villa. Five, back 5-0 now. Definitely back 5-0. <laughs>